What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com with my good friend, occasional co-host, co-presenter, Troy Barmore. G'day, Troy. G'day. G'day. Uh -huh. We are here in Midtown Manhattan. We actually, this is Zeitlin Optic, which is where Troy and his wife work, luxury eyewear store. We're doing a video on that, but that's another video. That's nothing to do with this current video. Stay tuned for that. Zeitlin Optic. Uh, the company is called NYX. And interestingly, it's not Nick apostrophe S, it's just multiple Nicks, so I'm one of them. Nyx is massively popular and influential because if you were to say to someone, what are the most popular, influential, meaningful American boots? Yeah, what is an absolute pillar of uh, the American heritage boot world? First they'd say Red Wing, fine, but then they would say, White boots and next boots. So yes, Red Wing boots, you know, 300 bucks or whatever. These are different because A, more expensive, B, uh, the, the small companies. C, they're in the Pacific Northwest, and Pacific Northwest boots are like a very distinct uh, subcategory in the in the land of mm -hmm. heritage okay. bootwear. The way that they're made, the aesthetics of it, the history that goes into you know making boots in that area for very specific jobs. And, and also just simply the one could very easily make the argument they're more robust than a brand like Red Wing. Red Wing boots, like, I don't know, about 300 bucks, 350 bucks. Mm -hmm. But the, if you have them side by side and if you've worn them both, they, they're very different. Boots like NYX, they have like oak tan vegetable, uh, tan leather in the midsole. Like it's just, it's the, the leather's much thicker. They're always very dense. They're very, very, very dense, robust. Very thick. So yeah, full disclosure, I didn't pay for these. Full disclosure, I really wanted them. Uh, full disclosure, I'm green with envy yeah. right now. Full disclosure, not pure so jealous envy. rage. Honestly, I've never actually gone hands on with a pair of Knicks personally, and and you know, I haven't either, actually. and I'm very very excited to do it because again, these do kind of occupy their own little area in terms of of you know heritage boot nerds and 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 leather goods. These are sort of held up as a a you know if if it's a paragon. I don't I don't care what it costs. I just want the best you know heavy work boot that money can buy. You know, damn the price. What should I get? Nix is always a part of that conversation. So I'm very excited to go hands on and see how how heavy they are. <laughs> I'm also excited to get a pair of boots with my name on them as well. Well, there is that. Ooh! Wow. Oh! The satisfying thud. They're so heavy. Whoa. Oh, that's going on my computer. Hell Thank yeah. You. The next Robert Boots oh, oh. in 1964 Rough Out is the name of this leather. Brief interruption, there was some confusion in the emails. This is not the Robert Boot, it is the Urban Logger Boot. The differences are minimal though. The Logger Boot has a standard top instead of a rolled top, it has a luggy outsole, and also it has a logger heel instead of the dogger heel. So they're very similar otherwise, and pretty much everything I'm saying applies otherwise, but yeah, the sole and the heel are just a little bit different. The 1964 rough out color. React. All right. Ew, this is ludicrous. Holy I'm not a short shit. guy. I'm not a short man, but this is gonna Dude. bump me up to 6'2 or 6'3. I need one of those like shoe weigher things I can hang it off of. <sighs> not to keep cursing, but like, the term shit kicker. I do want to go and stump on wow, cr criminals' dude, heads. Like I want to become a vigilante with these with these boots. And this is what it looks like on my feet in the future. After we finish filming these, I'm gonna walk around these boots. What do you, how do these look on my feet? Pretty great, right? Yeah. Look at them walking around. I would say so. It look, honestly, it looks like you could go fight a fire in like the forest in the mid. Next actually has a very devoted following among dudes who really need like just. Planet proof, yeah, life proof, everything boots. proof, bulletproof, fireproof kind of boots. Yeah. They've, they've got boots that are, that are very popular among firemen, but also like, you know, guys like lumberjacks, linemen, all the stuff that a lot of guys who would have like a, a Filson bag would like to pretend that they are capable right, of doing. Right. Nick's boots really do because uh, they actually are successful at targeting the niche of guys who have working class jobs but will pay over 500, yep. 600 bucks for a pair of boots because they need something that's gonna be as reliable as possible right. in these dangerous jobs. Well, and this is the whole thing, you know, when, when you think about these, these high-end boots, there's this, there's office, this, this inclination to think of, you know, if it's expensive, it's a luxury item. And sure, there, there is a luxury about buying, you know, very high quality things, but, you know, these are, in a lot of instances, you know, very purpose-built boots for guys who, don't mind investing in a pair of boots as they would invest in any of their other tools. And with that comes the fact that breaking in a pair of boots like these is a 
bear. I dude, mean, I, I'd forgotten that I'm gonna have to break in oh, these boots. dude, it's gonna be brutal. But when you do break them in, they are going to be completely molded to you. They are going to be yours and be a part of your foot. And a lot of guys who do work in their boots every day talk about that because if you buy something that is inexpensive, you still gotta break them in. It's still not a fun process to break in boots no matter who you are. But if you have to buy a new pair of boots every couple of years because they wear out, you gotta break in new boots every couple of years. And that's terrible. So <laughs> yeah, it is an it is an ordeal. It's yeah, an ordeal to bring awful. Our feet hurt all of the time. I was really looking forward to having a pair of Nyx boots because a lot of their boots have Nyx boots stamped into the side of them. And I thought I was gonna finally, oh. I thought I was gonna finally go yeah. with my name stamped into it, but There's I did it. nothing on that, which I- What a bummer! No, I dig that personally. I know, I get it, you know, I'll, I'll take my pocket knife and- I normally it, absolutely like, hate that, but for Nyx boots- I get it. I was interested. Yeah. It is worth emphasizing there is basically no brand out there that has as many wits as NYX. Mm. If you're a double A or a double F, which are two wits I'd never heard of until uh, I basically saw them the audible on NYX site. Double. The difference between like men's boots and women's boots is typically that women's boots are like a B width. You, if you're a woman and you want to get boots like this, you can just order these in a B width and you will, you'll, be, you'll be good to go. But they will also ask you to measure your feet and the measuring of your foot is a really big deal with, uh, with NYX. Um, they have all these instructions on how to do it and that will result in you getting a perfect boot because they've got just a a million lasts that they've developed to have any kind of foot shape out there. It is available uh, in just an obscenely enormous amount of leathers. There are 20 leathers you can get this boot in. If you'd rather have Creme XL, uh, burgundy, black, uh, they've got like olive as well. Uh. So yeah, so that's just important to note. The boots that I'm showing you here, this is like the skeleton of a boot that can be like customized to like basically like an, an infinite amount. Yeah, really 20 nice. different leathers, uh, like a dozen different widths, uh, and it costs uh, $539. I think the, the type of leather and stuff you pick, it, that, that can affect that's that. that. Oh, yeah. But that's, yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the basic uh, cost here of the boots. Um, another thing worth remembering, these will take a good few months to get made for you. This is the upside and the downside, you know, it's mostly the downside of getting a pair of boots that are so handmade and so customized to you is that they, they build them from scratch and because this, it's such a highly skilled endeavor to create a pair of boots like this, uh, and because like, you know, the, the workforce isn't massive for this sort of job, like it's not the kind of thing they're gonna be churning out thousands of boots a day, uh, and it's very hard to find these people skilled enough and trained in to be able to do this, yeah. There's a long wait list. Yeah, they were nice enough to put like a rush on mine for me uh, and it was still like three months. That's something to look out for, but if they're boots you're gonna have for at least a decade, uh, it's not it's not that long. At the end yeah, of the day. I mean these, it's, you know, not to be not to be hyperbolic, but like these are the kind of boots where if you took care of them, I mean, these could be, this could be something you can hand down to your kids. I mean- It is, right? Seriously, they, these, these could I always feel heirloom boots in a very real way if they're well taken care of. I mean, the the, the quality, like I said, the, the, the heel is just, Unbelievably sturdy on the the sole. There, you know, they're using uh, fiber mouth soles. And you can see the shank busting through here. Yeah, with, it's almost like a fiddle waist to it. It's so you know pronounced. <laughs> yeah. But you also have you know it's it's actually screwed in in addition to stitched in. I mean, these are not going anywhere. It's I mean, it is just crazy. Yeah, um, so how robust they are. It's it feels over engineered in the best way possible. I have, which, which is what this channel is all about, right? Yeah. I have an agonizing break-in ahead of myself, so I'm gonna go and prepare my feet, maybe get a foot massage, uh, meditate a little. Like, like all of the blisters. Have, have a few shots of whiskey, like see how it goes. I, I, you know, maybe they won't have a break-in. I, I might be being mean to these boots, but they might not have a break-in. But I'm gonna go and prepare for that. That is our unboxing of Nick's handmade boots. Let us know in the description below. What, what, if you were gonna get these boots and you've got 20 different leathers you can pick from, what would you want them to look like? Uh, if you tried Nick's boots, let me know. If you wanna rip on me for having waited so long to get a pair, feel free to do so. Uh, but I've got my work cut out for me, so I'm gonna go and put these on and just pray. <laughs> and also subscribe if you just kind of wound up here because I got a lot more, uh, yeah, boot reviews, boot content, but also stuff on like thick salvage denim and like, you know, wool coats and other cool like heritage kind of stuff coming up.